Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Emi Chicken, and this here is a package from John. Thanks, John. Okay, Abraka dupe. Wow. It's a unicorn. Very nice, but we don't want a unicorn, do we? Abraka dupe. Wow. Let's check what's in this box. Okay, XS 5600 game box. There's a professional game chip in there. All right. Mm-hmm. Dual system. 5,600 games with 3D games. Double rocker control. Look at that. Looks like it's from the future. Stealth fighter. Yeah. Micro SD is a 32 gigabyte Kioxia. Xeria. Other things in the box, we get a HDMI cable, power adapter. This one's 12 volts, one amp. A USB controller. Very similar to a PlayStation 2 pad. Very clicky. Feels very cheap Two. and light. This one has a number two on it, and the other one has a number one on it. One. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh, that. Oh. We get a remote control. Does not support gaming, but this is a gaming box with a powerful gaming chip. Here's the manual. In... English and Chinese. Let's take a look from all angles. Here's the front. We have a light and also an infrared sensor there for the remote. This side, a lot of nothing. On the back, we have the power, micro SD, AV, HDMI, and Ethernet. On this side, we have two USB 2 ports. At least I think the USB 2. There's two of them, so yeah, USB 2. For the size comparison today, we're going to use a pencil, sharper than the sword, and twice as long as this console XS5. All right, it's exactly the same size as a Super Console X. How's that for you? But a bit sturdier. If you're still a bit unsure on the size, how about this? Hello, humans! We are from the planet Global of Aloo. It looks like you found some new technology! Wow! Now, you must impress us, or we will blow up your planet to smithereens! <laughs> so, what's it gonna be, punk? <laughs> okay, so let's check the specs. Its true details are quite suspect, but we've found that it's indeed a quad-core 1.2 GHz CPU, and it runs a Mali 450. The reason why I got this was the 2 GB of memory. Interesting. Noisy fan. I do need a shave. If you take out the micro SD, then turn it on, it'll boot straight up to Android 9. It's quite empty, but we can install any APKs we wish. IDA64 reports 2 gigabytes of memory, and here we can confirm the 1.2 gigahertz quad. And the Mali 450 chip. Couple of benchmarks, here's Antutu. And Geekbench 5. If we pop in the micro SD and then restart, we get a teleportation magic box, which is MULEC. From here, we cannot bring up the settings menu, nor can we change any configurations. This includes controller configurations, which means we need to use the ones out of the box. Then very cheap ones. Let's have a quick look at what games are included. Here's Naomi. PlayStation and PSP. 
we have some very average titles. One thing I do like is this customs list. Let's check out some gameplay. Off the bat we can see that this is in widescreen and also there's a filter applied. We also have a lot of input lag. Neo Geo, same story. Oh my god. While it looks like it's running at a good speed, there is a lot of graphical data missing. One more thing to note is that quick save and quick load do work here. But we still have stretch pants and filter. Naomi games do actually look quite decent, but we're still in stretch pants mode. It's one of my favorite games here, but as we cannot get to the options screen, we have bad controls. There's a bit of PlayStation. And Tekken 5. Dark Resurrection. FPS is not constant. It feels like there's a frame skip on. Wow! That's amazing! Oh my god. I want one. No, you don't. Please send it now, seriously! Really? Yes. Ah. Uh. Bah! Okay, let's see if we can fix this up a little bit. If we plug it up to the network, hit up backslash backslash emuelic, and then go to ROMs, we can fiddle with the games list. And remove the trash. Another thing we can do is try to get the controls working. So we're going to find esinput.config open with notepad and then we need to add a start and select after a reboot we can bring up the configuration menus and we can configure this controller or even add any of our own for example here is the Hori 360 stick boom from this menu we can also change aspect ratio turn off the smoothing shaders yeah. Whilst looking a lot nicer, input lag is also not a problem. Play the games like they're meant to be played. So this system uses Emulec 3.9. The heatsink fan keeps it at a nice cool 57 degrees. How well would it perform without the fan? Hmm. Only two screws keep it held together. I used a guitar pick and then I could pop the back off. This board also comes off quite easily. Now this fan here is a screamer, it's very small, very high pitched. At the bottom we have the NAND and these two are the memory, so it's 2 gigabytes on board. Android sees this memory but Emuelic does not. The fan is attached to the heatsink with a glue and this heatsink is not coming off without a heat gun. Let's see how it is without that fan. I left it on all night and it stayed at 66 degrees. Not a bad start. I like to push systems with wipeout on the PSP. No frame skip. 
top right. Ooh. 22 frames per second. And the Mali 450 glitches. With frame skip at one. It's not really playable. Another game I like to test is Jim Power on the Amiga. No frame skip, 29 frames per second. Even with frame skip, we still aren't at 100%. Even without a fan, we're at 68 degrees. This won't throttle the system, it's quite acceptable. To the pros and cons, it looks nice and it stays cool. Cons, very low spec. Nerfed MULEC, noisy, poor controllers, and there are much better options out there. I wonder if those who made this system actually play games. When we have other options, like the Super Console X or the Retro Station, there is no real reason to even consider this machine. For $10 less, you can even get the HK1 box, install MULEC yourself, and have a far more capable system. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori. Please like and subscribe. I'll catch you around.